That's, that's, that's like the whole group, two groups gone. Are they coming or are they not coming? I've already told you, right? I um, please come on time because I cannot delay the the, the lesson. If we start late, what's going to happen? We'll finish late, okay? And if I start early, lots of you will be missing with the lesson. It's not optimum this semester, okay? Because you have so many unintended holidays. So this is already not optimum. When you learn botany, you should um, have the lesson, the lecture first, then only you deal with uh, this kind of plants. <clears throat> Come on in, quick, quick. Okay, those who just came in, please get your manual. This week, we are dealing with uh, practical number, let me see, number four, yes. And you are going to be around with me until practical number, I think just before flower, number six. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, we're going to do this just like last week. So I'll do the short briefing first. And we need to do the proper lecture um, later because I cannot cover everything in, in, in one go. We just don't have time for that. Right, so today we are going to deal with what organ? Stem. Do you have stem? Do you have stem? Where? Where? Tell me, which part of your body is your stem? Spine. That, 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 that's, that's your vertebrae. Where? Kaki. Kaki. Just, just the leg. The rest of you? No. What do you call it? <laughs> okay. Just your abdomen. So, um, stem. I think let's let's look at um, the primary functions for stem in plants first. Last week, what organs did you learn? Root. What, what are the primary functions of the root? Absorption. Encourage. What other one? We got three. Is the rhizosphere? Okay. Rhizosphere not only providing homes for the microbes, but also to to facilitate your plant so that the Absorption can happen a lot better. All right. So roots also for communication. Okay. You can you can imagine your your plants underground. They kind of shaking hands with the next plant, even even though they are from the different species. There is um there is a, a an experiment that scientists did a few years back. Um. So they are dealing with uh, uh I think it was a pine pine tree. So your pine, pine tree got many branches, right? So one of the branches, one of the branch of the pine tree, pine tree got the needles, needles leaf. They kind of back this branch. Yeah, they kind of back this branch. And then, 
They have all the roots here. So they back this plant and then they introduce with with an isot isotopic um, gas. You see, you know isotope? You know carbon? We got the atomic number 12, right? Sometimes we got carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Yeah. And this happens to, to other um, elements as well, including nitrogen. So they kind of introduce some kind of isotopic gas just into this branch. Yeah. So you see, it's completely closed. But guess what? A few distance away from this plant that get introduced with this gas, one unrelated plant, eventually you see in the body of this plant also have this um, isotopic element. This plant is not touching each other. They are quite a distance away. Oh. So when they study underground, they can see that somehow this plant, you can't see it, okay? Like the plant is over here and then the second plant all the way at the gate, you know, at the guard, guard house. That's, that's quite a distance, right? But for some reason, this plant have whatever content of this gas that got introduced. Then they learn that actually plants is communicating through the roots. Okay, so the roots, pretty much like the fiber network, all right? You, you don't get YouTube here, but you get the idea, okay? The communication tools. It's a lot happening underground, and it's the one of the least part of the crop study because people like visible things, okay? And what we are dealing today is very visible, okay? Um, and the stem. So the stem function, I've got... How many? The primary function. Oh. You see, my, my, my brain kind of want to finish very early, but my hand kind of still not waking up. <sighs> Number one is support. Transport. What else? What? Storage. And also new tissue. New tissue or new growth. Okay. Support because you can think of the stem like your skeleton. It provides the main framework for the plant body. That is why when you look at the plant, even though it is from far away, you can tell you, you're not mistaken it from other species. When you look at the plant, for example, the coconut tree by the beach, is it easily mistaken for a banana tree? Is it banana tree or banana plant? How do you call it? Banana tree or banana plant? Banana plant. What do you call it in Malay? Any other way to call it? <laughs> Remember, okay? When you are dealing with various agricultural produce in the market, the terminologies that you use, you know, some people kind of arguing whether tomato tomato is a fruit or vegetables, that kind of stuff. You need to put it into context. Are you talking botanically or culinarily? Culinarily, I think that's how you spell it. If you take your tomato, okay, you got your tomato here. If you talk uh, botanically, vegetable or fruit? It is fruit, botanically, because this um, came from the development of the flower. 
the flower get fertilized and then all the petals wither away and then the ovary enlarge and the ovules turn into seeds then you get your tomato fruit but if you go to the market you ask from 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 the seller i want buah tomato sounds weird right because in the market they are using this context culinarily so it becomes now what vegetables but in the right sense actually the true sense is vegetable must be leafy this is the the true definition of it so not not all um crop that you see at the market are actually vegetables okay is this is it wrong to call it vegetable tomato no if you're talking culinarily okay so it's pretty much like the tree the banana tree is it banana tree or banana plant if you're talking about botanically tree must have wood must have wood okay so this gives rise to another uh, another confusion in the terminologies um, let's let's pick up a herb mm. poko uh, pegaga Is, is this correct linguistically? I'm talking about linguistically now. What botanically? Is this the correct way you say it, right? Poco pegaga. But just now you learn this is the definition of tree, which is poco, must have wood. Is poco pegaga wood? No. This is actually. Um, the reason the the reason this 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 is not correct botanically because pegaga it's an herb herb stem or trunk without wood no wood so for now you take it this way whenever there is a wood in the plant in the stem in the trunk you call it tree botanically but the moment it hasn't got any wood in it botanically it is an herb okay so even though in malay it's called pokok pegaga the correct terminologies should be herba pegaga okay okay but you can call pokok Curry. It's it's woody. It's, can you call herbal curry? <laughs> Sounds weird, right? Okay, all right. So for support, um, because the stem um, has got um, a number of tissue inside of it, and this tissue they come together, they harden, they harden. They lignify. Lignify means that uh, they de they it gets deposited with lignin. Okay, so there's a special substance, special substance in the stem. Over the time, as the plant gets older, more and more lignin get deposited inside the stem, so it becomes hardened. Yeah, if you give some more time, the stem can undergo secondary thickening secondary thickening meaning that the, the layer of the cell walls gets thicker and thicker and thicker right so collectively this contribute to the support of the plant okay so not only that so you can see your plants from far away and not mistaken it for something else but it also to position other organ so that the leaf, the flower, and the fruit, they are in the right position.
for example, like this one. What is it? Papaya. Look at the leaf. Where, 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 where the leaf is attached to? It's attached to the stem. Okay. So the stem actually give the support for the leaf so that it is in the right position. It is at the top of the canopy. Why? Why the leaf must be at the top? Why cannot be the leaf? You know what? I'll just let the leaf grow uh, at the root level. Yes, to get the sunlight. To intercept solar radiation so that the plant can undergo photosynthesis. Right. And the same story for the flower and fruit as well. So stem, in addition to the support and also for the visual identification, it supports other organs so that they are in the optimum location. Okay, The flowers, if they are not in the right location, the pollinators might not be able to find it. Okay? Right. Um, do you, can you think of something in humans? Without this structure, other structure cannot be placed really well. What is it? Can you think of something? You should know this because this is your body. Now you learn that the stem, it itself is an organ. But because of the presence of this stem, other organs can be attached properly to it and in the right location. Okay, so it support, not only support the plant from collapsing in that sense, but to support the correct positioning of other organs. So my question is, is there anything in your body, you have an organ, that organ facilitate the support of other organs? Yes, rib for example. What, what, what's in the rib? Yeah, so you have your ribs and you have your diaphragm. It kind of contains all the organs inside. Imagine if you are without ribs. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to, you, to your organs inside? You know, do you have a little brother or little sisters? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose that you have, or you ha you have little cousins, little neighbors, sons or daughters. You just built a Lego tower, and then the, these little boys or girls get very angry. What's gonna happen to that tower? Is it going to tumble just one piece that way? It's it's going to tumble down into many many pieces okay so the ribs actually get um what do you call that ligament it's not it's not only encasing but it's actually attaching to your organs you got ligaments you got muscle it's like a glue okay so everything stay in place right so this is the point one organ is a necessity for the placement of other organs okay right and then transport the reason for transport is simply because inside of here if you learn about the phloem and xylem that collectively is the piping system for the whole plant okay look look all the buildings is there any piping system in the building do you have piping system in your body yes. what is it called Blood vessel is the smaller components of it. Collectively, what is it called? The system. Circulatory system. You got your artery. You, you got your what? Vein, aorta and everything. Blood vessels, blood capillary. So the names change because of the diameter of the tubing uh, are changing as well. But these are all plumbing system. The transport. The transport of water and also nutrients. Remember, okay, 
this is autotrophic organism, meaning that it, it is manufacturing something. After it has manufactured, the product of manufacturing must go somewhere. It cannot stay in the factory forever. You have your uh, Vitagen factory. Vitagen just produce Vitagen all year round. Never leave the factory. What's going to happen to the factory? Can it produce more Vitagen? It just got, get crowded and congested. The Vitagen needs to leave the factory to be distributed to all the groceries and retailers. Then, then there is a need for such a system. Okay, So transport is very important. And then for the storage. Um, so in your body, you have your skeleton, right? What's in your skeleton? Your skeleton is what? Your skeleton, what is it? Do you or do you not have skeleton? Okay, your skeleton is what actually? Bones. Bones. What is in your bones? Air, oxygen. What, what, what is in your bones? What do you need to have a healthy bone? Calcium. Yes, in your bone, actually not just calcium, calcium, phosphorus and some other things. Okay, so it is the storage organ as well. Remember, bones collectively become the skeleton. It is mainly from your point of view, it looks like a support system. But actually, it also serves as a depository. Okay, depository, as a storage. Guys might not have this issue so much for, 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 the, for the ladies. Once you're pregnant, then you give birth, you will be able to do something before, before you give birth. What is that? Something going to come out not before childbirth. Hey! <laughs> Lactating, nursing. Your, your mammary glands will be activated. Once that is activated, what is going to come out? What? Do you have mammary glands? Okay. It, it will make what coming out? Milk. Hey. Ha. It's, it's your body, okay? You should know. Guess what? When the more milk coming out from you so that you can nurse the baby, this milk is full of calcium. The calcium comes from somewhere. Guess what? Where? From your bones, okay? I think there is a study, kind of uh, studying the, 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 the women who have made uh, lots of babies, but they kind of a bit malnutrition. Actually, the, the teeth kind of go away very fast early in the age because they just got brittle. And then they also experiencing osteoporosis in the early stage of the life because they don't receive proper nutrition. So the bones kind of get eaten up because the moms need to produce the milk for the baby. So the faster the baby sucking up the milk, the less dense the bone going to be. All right? And that, that is why kau tak boleh dahaka dengan mak kau. Okay, your mom literally losing teeth and bones to feed you, right? Okay, uh, so it's a bit different with animals uh, like chicken. Uh, chicken, well, chicken don't have to, to, to produce milk for the chicken babies, but they need to, the, the calcium to produce the egg shells. There is a special bone in the chicken to, to, for this purpose. So like a sacrifice bone. Okay, all right. So it's a for storage. So inside of here, you look, it looks whitish and stuff. That is actually um, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. Poly, 
saccharides. Um, poly means many. Saccharides, saccar or sugar. Complex sugar. Cellulose, which is the fiber inside here, is actually a type of polysaccharides. Okay. So these actually the um, the storage that the plants have in case of the emergency or at night. At night, the plants cannot photosynthesize, right? So the food has to come somewhere. Do you have storage organ besides bones? What? When you are fasting, what is one important organ to feed you the whole day? Stomach. Stomach. Your stomach is not functioning. If it is functioning, what's it called? Because you're eating. Your liver. Liver. Your liver store up glycogen. Glycogen. In the plant, it's all the glucose comes together to form polysaccharide that we call starch. That is in plant. In humor, you don't have starch, but you have glycogen. Similar stuff. And glycogen is in your liver. When you are fasting, you're not eating, your body will use up all this glycogen store in your liver until it's completely empty. Once it's empty, then only you will start burning fat. Okay? So it depends. Some people, they have big storage. Some people, they have very small storage. So that's kind of genetic. Okay? And then also the new tissue. The new tissue, because of... Oh, sorry. <coughs> Look at this stem. This stem, remember last week you learned about nodes and internodes? Yes. Yeah. At the nodes, you can have growth. Like here. You see? Yeah. So this growth is within the nodes region, the nodal region, give rise to the new branch, new leaf, new fruit, new flower. It can be anything. Okay? <clears throat> if you can look next to it, this actually is a sleeping bud in the axil of the leaf. Sleeping bud. It, it is sleeping because there is a condition called apical dormancy because the top of the plant is still present. Since it has been cut this, this way, if you leave this in nature, this will give rise to the new branching. It will grow because the apical dominance has been removed. right? And that is why when you cut shrub or trees, it becomes bushier. Pokok menjadi rendang. Apical dominance has been removed. Right? Right. Okay. So, those are the basic functions of the stems. Okay. And pretty much like your root lesson last week, whenever these things get amplified or become more intense, what happens? What, what is the process called? You have the basic function. And this function gets amplified or gets more specific. Modification. Tak sampai seminggu. Modification or specialization. All right? And that's what you're going to learn today. <coughs> right. Okay. So if you look at your uh, manual... You're going to deal with a number of plants. We got, um, so number one, Akalifa Hispida, we have the plants, but we don't want to use it because that's very precious. So we replace that with this plant. Mulberry. Morus. Alba. Okay. Right. And then we have Karika Papaya. Bete. And we have... Um, Zimes. Do we have Zimes? Yeah. We have Zimes here. I have actually taught you last week. Do you call this stem? What do you call it? Calm. Because why? 
It's a grass family. Okay, correct. All right. Okay, and then we have Musa species. This should be pokok pisang, the banana plant. Do we have it? Ah, all right. <laughs> Ini bukan keladi. Ah, uh, what's it? What is it? Malay. Umbut pisang. Okay. And we have Solanum tuberosum. Ubi. Kat mana Ubi? Where? Where? Hmm. Yep. I am going through this because some of you, you will be surprised your friends do not know things. Um, okay, we have ginger, gingerbread. Okay, and then asparagus. Bring, bring over here. <clears throat> asparagus. We have Azanopus compressus, which is the cow's grass. What what what's missing? Which one I told So this is Azanopus compressus, your uh, cow's grass, your field grass, you know, football field. And um, you got the. What's this? Onion. Bubs. And Imperata Cylindrica. Let's see, does it have here? Okay. Why are you having all of this? Um, okay, now we need to talk about... I'll, I'll finish this in under 10 minutes so that you can, you can begin um, drawing. Okay. If the stem is in regular sand, you only have what you learned last week, okay? You have your nodes and internode. Yeah, and there can be attachment to your main stem. If it's the attachment for a leaf, dish stop, you call it what? This, you call it what? The stalk of a leaf. It's not st stipule, it's this thing, the small thing. This not stipule. This stalk, what do you call it? Tangkai daun, what do you call it? Petiole. Petiole. That is leaf stalk. Stalk. Tangkai. Then, it can also be the support for the flower. What do you call this? All, everybody uh, label this. You should know. What do you call it? Okay, this cell. Uh, okay, so this is the basic of your stem structure. Okay, but look at the plants now. There are many plants with different forms of stem because they simply have gone modification. Modification and the way you can understand this stem modification, um, it can be divided into the location of the stem in nature. Okay, so it can be um, aerial, sub aerial, and also underground. Underground, okay? Depending on the plant species, the stem is not always like this, okay? This is what usually that you will see in your textbook, like this. This is regular, okay? But in many other species, the stem are not being presented to you visually in this form, okay? Because they are in different location, okay? So, for the... Um, Ariel, um, I don't know. Do we have the plant here? Hmm. 
Yeah, I think maybe we have one. I'm telling you all these words so that you can um, uh, look out on your own, okay? This one, this here. This is, what plant is this? So this is asparagus. Hi, hi, hi. Tengok, kau ingin tegak tak boleh nak ni, nak tak siapa. So, there is a special modification here. Look at this thing. What do you call this? Guess what? This whole thing is actually a stem. Not leaf. This is not leaf. But the leaf, the leaf, the stem has been modified to serve two functions. Stem and leaf at the same time. Okay? So collectively, collectively, this thing we call, there's a name for it. And this is special for asparagus. It's called cladot. So you can look it up later, okay? Asparagus, clad dirt, so that you can draw properly and label it, okay? If you ask, where exactly is the leaf? You want to see the leaf of uh, asparagus? Can you see the brown thing here? Yes. That is the leaf. Okay, and this leaf for asparagus, so you have the, the main stem here. Okay, and then you have your, your clay dot. Okay, you have your clay dot. So this is your whole thing is your clay dot. Modified stem. And then you have a small appendage here. This is not stipule, this is actually leaf. We call it scale leaf. Scale leaf, down sisir, ataupun down sisir. Right? Okay, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, so, this can be under the example of aerial stem. Why is it in aerial? It's in the air. Okay? So, let's, another example is sub-aerial. Sub-aerial means part of the stem exposed to the air, part of it underground. Okay, one example here is Exonopus compressors. That would be this, this guy here. Have you seen this before? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't see this before, you don't, you, you never went to school. This, this is rumput kerbau, cow's grass. Cow's grass. So in nature, in nature, you kind of see a lush lawn, green. Actually, if you can actually pull it and it's going to come out like a string of rice party. Not rice party, grass, grass, grass party. It's actually in nature, it looks like this. You know Christmas lights? Yeah. Pretty much like Christmas light. So it is in this form here. I'll just draw it here, okay? So you have... So this is your node. Your, the node will give rise to the, a new grass plantlet. And you have all the roots here. Okay, so this whole formation, we call it runner. Runner. This is the stem, okay? The top, the top part of the stem is exposed to the air. The bottom part exposed to the ground. That's why this modification fall under the category of sub-aerial modification. And one example is runner. And the plant is this plant. This is the example. Okay. Why is it called sub-aerial? Half of it exposed to the air, half of it exposed to the ground, all right? Okay, <clears throat> so this is, um, so you can draw this properly. Okay, what else? Um, I just want to give a quick example. Underground, ooh, okay. Underground, so this is completely not in the air, not half of it, completely underground. What plan is it? Um, yeah, actually we can have, 
We got three here actually. Or four. Yep. We got um, onion, we got um, potato, uh, ginger, and also banana. Banana, <laughs> banana corm. C O R M. Okay. So I'm going I'm going to tell you what is the name of the modified structure so that you can look up on your own. You need you need time to search this and to absorb by yourself. Okay? So I'll just give the name straight away. Um, for the banana, banana, right under here, right? Banana, the, that modified structure is called corm. Okay? Clay dot, this is asparagus just now. Right, what else? Um, this allium, the modified structure is called bulb. Okay, what else underground? Um, ginger. Ginger, the modified structure now is called rhizome. Okay, what else? Uh, oh, potato. Potato, the modified structure now is called tuber. These are all stem. Get into your head now. All of these are stem. However, there are stem that get modified and the location in nature is underground. That's why the names are different now. Alright? Okay. Okay, what else? Uh, exonopus compressors. So this is your exonopus. Exonopus. Um, imperata cylindrica. Oh, got imperata cylindrica. Ah. Anybody can guess what what kind of modification this plant have? Lalang. What is it? Anybody want to try? Anybody want to try? Okay, so this will be your homework. I need to know. Which one is it? Is it aerial stem, sub-aerial stem, or underground stem? And then what kind of specialized modification is it called here for this plant, Lalang? Actually, from, from here, you can, you can already tell. Right? Okay? All right, okay. Have I covered all? Uh, oh, Karika Papaya. Oh, this is a regular stem. However, there is something on this. Um, can I have it? Oh, sorry. Uh, can I have the mulberry? Okay. I want to show you this, okay? Um, so, I think, I think this is, this is even clearer. Okay, this is clearer. This is mulberry branch, the stem of the mulberry. You can see there are some bumpy dots on the stem. What are those? These are not warts. These are specialized structure that is called <coughs> land T cell. Okay, so your stem here, you found Bumpy structure, raised pores, raised pores. So you got bumpy structure. You you can find this on the Karika papaya stem as well, but it's more prominent on this mulberry leaf. So these are called the lenticel. So lenticel are actually pores, pores, but they are raised, meaning that they are above the surface. For what? To facilitate gas exchange between the atmosphere into the stem of the plants. Okay? Not all plants have lenticels. Okay? So it's a specialized structure for this plant. Alright? Okay. Um, and then, this part here, this is the leaf scar. Leaf scar. 
it used to be live here as the plants get older the leaf fell down it left behind a scar okay and the scar healed so you got you got this um, pattern here we call it leaf scar or abscission layer okay just label it correctly that's all that is needed for now all right okay have i covered all the plants zimes ah this thing how many of zimes we have one two mm. take that tupperware containing the knife bring over here <sighs> not stem not stem okay these are actually leaf sheath you know leaf for grass two parts i'll show you here oh, let's use this So for all grass species, typically this is a unit of leaf. This two parts. You have the down part here. Leaf shift. Can you write leaf shift so that they know? Just write on the board. Shift so that they know how, how to spell it. <coughs> um, use, use this board. The, the white board. Shift. Um, saludang daun leaf sheath okay the top part here still part of the leaf this is called leaf blade or lamina apa buruk lah pisang kau sheath leaf sheath Sarong, sarong, you know. Um, another one is leaf blade or lamina. Two. So, sheath plus lamina, one unit of grass leaf. Okay. You get it now? Okay. Now comes the, 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 the interesting part. Look at this sheath. It's in the form of... Um, semicircle right so this sheath they can wrap upon each other wrap and encapsulate one layer upon another so this leaf here get wraps under the previous leaf and so on so when many layers of leaf sheaths compressed tightly wrapped together they form the illusion of stem that is why we don't call it stem because the hard part that you have here is actually the concentric circle of leaf sheath this part here all right okay that is why all right however there is a small um exception just for the corn the corn, you still have this um, notes and internotes. Okay? For rice, you don't have this. That's all the example. So another example, good example for this is actually banana plant. The banana trunk that you look at, batang pokok pisang tu, that is not a stem. It's actually this thing. Okay? Concentrate, tightly wrapped, leaf shift seludang sarung daun belengka i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying uh beleng belengka mampat separuh bulatan bersama it's too bad right i learned my plant science not uh, uh, in england that's that's what you get all right okay but you get idea so you can you can play a, a conundrum with your friends now. What is the largest herb on planet Earth? Pokok herba apakah yang terbesar di dunia? Pisang. Yeah. 
banana plant is the largest herb on the planet. Do you see any woods? So it's herb. You just got the definition earlier today. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, okay. I think that that is all for for now. Okay. Um. I think I've given all. Z maze as well. The modification. Okay. Okay. I've covered it all. So, um. Is that clear? Is that clear? You can. Okay, you can ask me around. Okay. I'm not. I'm not going away. All right. Oh. That's a reason, another reason why I brought this. I want to show you something else. You want to see the concentric circle? Okay. This stem, you cannot do this. You can open it one by one. And all the way to the center. Abyss. Can you do it with mulberry? No. Because this is the true stem. That's why. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Um uh, I think that's all. Any question? Any question? All good? All good? Okay. Okay, you can sorry? Oh yeah, of course. Um remember the in one in one hour. <laughs> All right, okay, um, I, I just want to save time now. So I think you can start moving and, and draw this, okay? All right, okay, do now. Last. Um, uh, you know, because after this half semester, I'm not going to be around to teach you. Half of it, okay? Um, I, I, I have a big concern. You are not going to learn something important when it comes to plant anatomy. I think I better take five minutes to, to, to teach you something so that it will be useful while you are learning anatomy. Okay? All right. This is about the cross section of a plant. Um, you are half. <coughs> you see, um, this is your bulb. Even your body, we have the same cross section, meaning that the way you cut your plant, the plane has its own special name. Sata pemotongan. I, I hope I got it right. So there, there, there are a few <coughs> um, sectioning plane cutting cutting sata pemotongan sata pemotongan. Um, ataupun uh, sat this thing sometimes it depends on the book. I think in the older book they, they call it um, sayatan. I do not know. That's that's what the book says. Old book sayat. You know. You, okay. So basically, there there, there are a few. Um, you have. Let, let us let's take this. Thing. I, I need my other marker. Okay. So there is one here that is called transverse, transverse, or simply cross section. And it's actually. So cross section is actually you take this piece out. So you're going to see something like this. And then you have longitudinal longitudinal um so that actually got here all the way and then so 
So you're going to get a piece of it, like a cake. Cake piece. And then there is another one. Okay, this, this one is a bit difficult. Um, can I have another marker? Blue, 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 blue. <clears throat> so if you have like a xylem or phloem, here, you only have this section only. Okay, and then this is called tangential. Okay, there, there are three basic sections, planes, when you're dealing with plant, especially now we're dealing with the stem. Um, so there is a transverse cross section. This is, if you have this, your, your onion here, that would be simply by cut it, the, the, the head of it. So you're looking down to it. Cross section. Cross section. Okay. For the longitudinal, actually there is two. It can only half of it or like the whole thing. If you have the half of it, that's the cake thing. Okay, pretty much like that. So this is your longitudinal section, the whole length of this onion bulb. Okay, or you can have the whole of it. Okay, let me cut it. Okay, or the whole of this. This is only a small part of it. This is the whole. The whole is actually pretty much until the end, okay? Front face, your front body, okay? And then there is a tangential. This is, this is actually not, 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 not a good example for this one. It's, this should be a stem. You see, if you have your stem, you will have um, this um, circle here, uh, maybe your vascular bundle, It depends on which circle are you referring to. Let's say that you are taking the outermost circle just before um, the skin of your stem. So this part here, it's called tangential because if you look at the um, trigonometric definition, tangent is this thing. Remember your math lesson? That's the tangent, right? So this is why it is called the tangent. So for this guy here, the tangent would be, well, that's not, maybe I use this one. It's my food. <laughs> ah, you see, there is a circle in, in, in the middle here, the white circle. So. I cut it just, just before the circle, like this. Yes, this part here, this is the tangential because it is tangent to the white circle inside of here. Okay, just that, all right? So if you want to do your anatomy later, remember which sections are you referring to, all right? Just now, oh, one more thing. For this one, you need to know which is the, the top and which is the bottom for your potato. When you're labeling your potato, 
there is a the top part is actually the apical bud of your potato this is not potato okay i'm talking about the potato your actual potato you need to know the apical part and also the stem part of your potato okay because the apical part can give rise to the new plant the stem part is actually from where the tuber came from right okay all right okay um Oh, bawang. Do you need me to describe this labeling? This onion? I'll just, I'll just a quick, quick. Uh, I'll just do this uh, cross-sectioning, okay? The longitudinal sectioning. So if you cut your onion, oops. You cut your onion, longitudinal section, like this. Um, it's much easier that way. Oh, okay, that's not smooth. You're going to see that your onion has this structure. Let me see, show you. Okay. So you will have this structure here. You've got the structure here. There are so many layers. Okay, and then just okay, and then you have that peppery thing. Okay, so the thin peppery membrane outside, the one that you remove before cooking, this thing, this peppery thing. Kulit bawang, the one that you call it. That's called the, um, it's got two names actually, tunica, tunica or scale leaf. leaf. These fleshy things that you look layer upon layer upon layer upon layer here, this is actually fleshy um, leaf base if you put this onion into the ground this actually will start to form shoot this this will break and produce a shoot and this is what you get your spring onion daun bawang right in the middle here you have your um, your shoot, your shoot, your apical, apical, apical shoot. Okay, this thing can be maris, uh, vegetative or meristematic. Meristematic or vegetative. Depending on the age of this bulb. If it has grown for quite some time, it is actually ready to go to, oh, sorry, not meristematic. <sighs> Reproductive. Reproductive. Because onion is biennial, okay? Biennial. Biennial means um, finish cycle in two years. Do not get confused with biannual. Biannuals means happen two times in a year. For example, rice cultivation. Your rice in Malaysia, biannual cultivation. Okay, But for onion, the growth cycle, the life cycle of onion, it requires two years to happen. The first year is vegetative. Vegetative. The second year is reproductive. So the structure that you see here, right in the middle here, oh, not this one. It can be reproductive or it can be vegetative. Nobody knows. Because the meristem, the meristem is undifferentiated. That's the word. Un 
different shaded. It can be anything, right? And then you have this at the base here. We call it the basal plate. Basal plate. And then there's just a small uh, uh, bump here before the root. Collectively, this is actually the stem. Ah, far away the story, right? That is the stem. The rest of these are not stem. There are fleshy structure of the leaf base. The stem is actually just that. To the point you cannot even see it. And most of the time it's under the ground. That's why it goes down there. Okay? All right? All right. Okay. Um, you can Google and take your time to absorb this in new information. All right? Okay? All right. Okay. Okay. I think that's, that's all for now. Is that okay? Not okay? Not okay? You can ask me, okay? Um, if you're not clear. Okay. Go on now. Um, we'll, 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 um, you have a few plants to draw, right? Okay. Do it now. <laughs> draw, draw, draw. Uh, let me try to give you a few things. Use your pencil and then you can label it properly. Okay, can you borrow your pen? Uh -huh. Yeah, you can label it properly. For example, like this one, then you can label. Actually, there is a lenty cell here. Lenty cell and then a leaf scar for, for the carica papaya. Somebody coming? And then for the mulberry leaf, when you take the surface imprint using your pencil, the graphite of your pencil, you can actually see the lenty cells here. Okay. Once you have this, you label it. Lenty cell. Guess what? Cut it nicely. Remove all the excess surface. And then stick it to your drawing. That can happen as well. Okay. So later on, with, with other organs, leaf, whatever that you can take the surface um, implant, you can use your pencil or um, I used to uh, have very liquidy marker. So I'll just color the surface and then get the imprint. But this, my marker is not that clear. You're going to get something like this. This is the surface imprint of the papaya stem. It's more colorful this way. Be creative. Be creative. Bukan korang cikgu ke? Ooh, I am actually teaching cikgu to be cikgu. So, so I'm like the uh, Thai law cikgu. <laughs> Is that a sign between Abyss or the Habis? So, what do you think? What are the battery? Oh, it's not mati. I think battery is one. It's not the same. 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 It's not the same.
Ada. It's the right heat into the brain. <laughs> ah, you can have it. Thank you. Ah, you can have it. The onion layers. So you can have something like this. Ah, boleh tengok sini. Sebab dia punya. Tak. Okay. Ah, tengoklah. 